welcome to this presentation on techniques of studying fossils we've learned about fossils their importance their significance today we will study the different techniques that are involved in studying the fossils fossils provide evidences to construct origin history evolution of the earth origin and evolution of all forms of life including man can be understood only through the fossils however studying fossils is a laborious process and requires lot of skills lot of time and lot of patience the fossils also indicate the location of fossil fuels petroleum coal and all these things are discovered only based on the the existence of fossils a presence of a type of fossil so thus studying fossils is a very important aspect in not only understanding evolution for us and also in the discovery of the fossil fuels when it comes to the discovery of a fossil no plant or an animal is found in a single intact unit very rarely you find a fossil in an intact form otherwise each fossil all right that you discover is only discovered as a bit or a piece of a plant for example leaf stem fruit seed of a plant are discovered individually by different scientists in different locations finally one scientist will sit together and identify the different organs of a particular plant put together and reconstruct the organism for example we have glossopteris glossopteris organs were discovered by different people and they were called by different names for example we have otocaria dentaria scutum vertebraria these are all the different organ genera belonging to the same uh, organism same plant that is glossopteris but they were not found together they were found in different places in different forms and later brogniart in 1831 discovered all these discoveries and then put together the reconstructed the fossil genus called glossopteris so thus icbn international code of botanical name nomenclature which actually governs the naming of the plant has allowed the naming of organ genera so that you can discover an individual organ and name it i have an example here glossopteris all right where we can see the different organs and the different organs are discovered by different people finally all of them are put together and the glossopteris plant was reconstructed coming to some of the conclusions that are drawn based on the discovery of fossils for example we have carboniferous strata the strata of the crust called carboniferous strata and that was formed during carboniferous period and it is known that during that period the earth was completely covered by luxur luxuriant forests made up of pteridophytes and gymnosperms the earth was completely covered by forest almost completely and that is why during that period lot of fossil fuels have been accumulated so whatever fossil fuels that you discover now most of them belong to carboniferous period and that is how you can discover different strata different fossils and that is why the studying fossils is an important aspect now i as i mentioned already depending on the type of fossil we have a different technique for example impression impression is a fossil only external features are available and how do you study them by taking the imprints drawings and photography same is the case with the uh, casts molds nodules here also you are seeing only impressions coming to petrification petrification is a fossil where the plant is completely converted into rock by lithification organic matter is completely replaced by inorganic matter in this case you see or you get or you can study both external and internal features of the plant the external and internal features of the fossil where you can take ground thin sections so the fossil can be cut into thin sections 
and thin sections are treated like the sections of a stem and then they are studied like these sections of a plant. Also we have pill technique, also we have transfer technique, you have microtomy technique or x-ray technique. In all these cases the, the method used is simple where you can take a section, cross section of the stem and a thin section of the rock is studied like how you study a normal stem. Coming to compression fossil, we have three types of compressions, peat, lignite and coal. In all these forms, organic material is available. In all the three above kind of fossils, there is no organic matter. Whereas in case of compression fossil, we have the organic material found in the form of pollen grains, spores, trachids and vessels where the fossil is pulverized and it is treated with acids and then filtered and the pollen and spore trachids are isolated and they are studied to study the type of pollen, pollen that existed in the past. Based on the type of pollen, the uh, plant can be identified because pollen is unique to a particular plant. Last type of fossil is mummification, amber, where plant or animal is actually preserved, actually preserved. You can see it in the intact and dried form where morphology, anatomy of genetics of these fossils can be studied. You can see here the impression. You can see the impressions of a fern and a rock. The imprints can be transferred onto some other sheet by using photography, drawings and imprinting all these methods. All right. Now we will see how we can study. Same is the case even with in case of uh, casts, molds, nodules. In all these cases also same method where imprints are transferred like they are the fingerprints of a plant that existed in the past and these fingerprints are transferred onto some other form for studying it. But only external features are possible here. So you can see here there is a, an impression of a leaf and a rock and that impression can be transferred by using a very simple technique where you can pour nail polish onto it, allow the nail polish to dry, remove the peel of a dry, dried nail polish where the fingerprints of the impressions are transferred and those fingerprints can be studied later under microscope. If you want you can study even x-ray techniques also can be studied, can be used. Coming to petrifications, as I mentioned already, you can take a thin section of the rock and that section is studied under microscope after staining and the section is treated with acids and also with other chemicals. So I'll come to the protocol later. We have a, a wooden log here which is totally petrified on the right hand side. You can see the same wooden log is cut the transfer section is taken and you can see the in internal structure, you can see the vascular bundles, you can see the annular rings, all right, and there are different techniques, for example, ground thin section, the rock is cut into thin section, the slice is further polished by using a powder called carborandum powder of different grades, First, you are using 400 grade carborandum powder, then 300, then 200, finally 100. So, grade by grade by grade, you can use different types of powders and to polish this thin section and then a thin section is prepared and this is mounted on a gum using a resin or using a Canada balsam on a slide and then spread it under microscope. This is what is thin ground section. Same, we have a peel section where this uh, the section thin section what you have taken is uh, peeled and taken out in the form of a thin film by using a gum called nitrocellulose along with you are using some other acids also so the thin section is transferred on a peel by using this technique called peel technique so we also have a ready-made uh, peel technique by transfer technique it is called where ready-made cellulose films are available where you need not use a thin gum. These ready-made uh, uh, cellulose films are like cello pin tape. They are pasted onto the fossil where the fossil is transferred onto the uh, cellulose film and they can be studied further. This is only when 
we have organic matter available in the petrification sometimes organic matter is available in petrification it is not completely converted into rock in that case you can transfer the uh, fossil by using transfer technique or field technique in transfer technique what you are doing is you are transferring the fossil onto a thin film of cellulose just like a cellulose pente and that is later treated with acids and uh, uh, and then mounted on a slide to study them same can be studied by using x-ray technique you can also use microtomy technique where the rock is cut into thin slices section by using a blade which is studded with diamond otherwise rock cannot be cut into thin films and that thin film is mounted on a slide and studied further coming to maceration technique and this is the technique which is used in compression fossils where the compression fossil is pulverized is broken into small fragments bits and this is later treated with uh, potassium hydroxide nitric acid hydrochloric acid different acids to remove the uh, inorganic material and then the fossils which are available in the form of spores trachea's vessels Uh, and all other materials and they are isolated and they are later studied which are uh, actually cutaneous parts now you can see here this is coal on the left hand side it may be lignite or peat also and this coal is pulverized where it is broken into small bits it is treated with acids and it is filtered and the filtrate is taken and the micro fossils are carefully isolated and studied i am showing you some pollen grains and these pollen grains belong to some fossils but these are index pollen pollen of the extinct plants that were there during carboniferous period and i am showing you here how different types of compression fossils are made because of time pressure heat uh, the peat is converted into lignite lignite is converted into coal coal probably must have formed during carboniferous about 250 to 300 million years back and this contains still some of the organic material in the form of pole pollen grain in the form, form of spores in the form, form of trachea and they can be extracted and studied so this is the maceration technique simple as i mentioned already you can take coal or lignite pulverize it treat it with acids filter it then study the micro fossils under microscope after mounting it on a slide last type of fossil is amber where plant or animal is actually preserved in gum and resin and this will be easy for us for us to isolate the exact uh, structure of the fossil where you can study morphology you can study anatomy you can genetics of the plant also can be studied where we can extract dna and attempts are being made to even recreate the extinct plant and animals all right so this is how you can study mummifications or uh, we have different kinds of mummifications where the fossils are either preserved in amber or tar or rice in all these cases you can study the exact morphology anatomy of the fossils okay so this is how we can study different fossils by using different techniques thank you very much for watching this video I also thank all those resources from where I collected this information and made this video. Subscribe so that you can get the alerts whenever I release the next e-content. Thank you very much.